Hi, this is Mike Lawless, and in this video I'll discuss transporter-based in vitro to in vivo extrapolation. This is Gastro Plus tutorial 5.4.7. Transporter-based IVIVE accounts for both carrier-mediated and passive transporter processes. It requires the PBPK Plus and metabolism and transporter modules in Gastro Plus. OATP is an influx transporter. It's expressed in the basal lateral membrane of hepatocytes, and so it would transport a drug from the blood into the liver. MRP2 is an efflux transporter. It's expressed on the apical side of the canicular part of the hepatocyte. Therefore, it transports the drugs into the biocaniliculus. We will create rat IV, human IV, and PO simulations. This next slide is just an overview of the overall process. So we'll start by creating a rat PBPK physiology. We'll add the transporter kinetics using the metabolism and transporter module, and then we'll run a rat IV simulation. Next, we'll create a human PBPK physiology, create the uh, transporter kinetics again, and then run IV, human IV and PO simulations. I've opened the Valsartan database and moved to the second record, which is an intravenous dose of a one mg per kg uh, dose of Valsartan to a rat. Next, I'll go to the pharmacokinetics tab and define a new uh, physiology. So I'll specify uh, a rat and then simply uh, click OK and save this in um, the database folder. And as you can see, it defined uh, all the um, uh, tissues uh, for the rat. Now I'll switch back to the compound tab and click on the transporter table where we can enter the records for the uh, OATP and MRP2 uh, transporters. Uh, so I'll just click here to get a genet generic uh, record and then also here for the uh, second record. I'm going to uh, change this transporter here to OATP and uh, it's going to be an influx transporter and uh, its location is going to be uh, PBPK so that it uses the expression levels in the uh, physiology. Uh, next I'll change the second record to uh, MRP2, which is down here at the bottom of the list. It's an efflux uh, transporter, and again, I'm going to use uh, PBPK for the uh, location. The next step is to highlight one of the uh, transporters. In this case, I'll start with OATP and go into the unit converter for OATP. Uh, I'm going to express these. Uh, these were expressed in hepatocytes. Uh, the value is uh, unbound. And then I'm going to enter the in vitro um, Vmax uh, for this, from this particular experiment uh, that was published in 2009 in the Journal of Pharmacokinetic and Pharmacodynamics. Uh, the KM uh, for OATP is 28.4, and uh, we need to make sure we have the right units here. So picomole per minute per milligram of microsomal protein is correct, and then microliter per minute uh, uh, for this other value. And then the in vitro clearance stiff is 1.21, uh, and that's in microliter per minute per milligram of microsomal protein. Then uh, I'm going to, sh um, um, this is already specified as basal lateral and an influx uh, transporter. I'm just going to look at the uh, advanced options. So OATP uh, is correct here, and uh, we do need to change the physiology to RAT. So I've changed just a few of the uh, parameters here, and um, we can check what the um, tutorial V cells in milliliter could should be uh, one point, or excuse me, eight point one two six seven. The authors mentioned that KM and Vmax values for the interaction of valsartan with the influx transporter while also estimating obtaining an estimate of the passive diffusion. 
they express the diffusion rate or the permeability per milligram of microsomal protein. This allows us to use the same conversion factors for KM and Vmax to obtain the in vivo dis diffusion rate in the entire liver. This in vivo diffusion rate corresponds to the permeability surface product area for the liver and is shown as PSTC, comma, U uh, in this field here. Now here we're assuming that the passive permeability of the drug through the membrane is the same in all tissues, with the difference in passive diffusion between the tissues caused by differences in surface area. With that assumption, we can scale the liver PSTC to other tissues by accounting for the different tissue surface areas. The total cell surface areas of the individual tissues are not known, so we will only use tissue cell volumes as an approximation for the scaling. The total cell volume in a selected tissue is also shown in the advanced options sections of the transporter tab. That's the V-cell I was referring to earlier. We will use this value to calculate the PSTC per mill a liter of volume of cell volume or specific uh, PSTC marked by the um, as seen here under the uh, PCST. Okay now we're ready to transfer uh, these KM and Vmax values back uh, into the to the uh, transporter table. You see here that we uh, get a message that we um, need to change the tissue perme uh, to permeability uh, limited because this is a permeability limited uh, tissue. So now if we briefly look here, uh, we see the Vmax and the KM for the uh, for OATP1B1. Uh, now we're going to switch to the MRP and again click on the unit converter here. So valsartan is cleared by biliary secretion. Uh, the kinetic parameters, though, for the efflux transporter were not measured. So at this moment, we'll just assume that there's no accumulation in the liver and the same kinetics um, apply to the efflux transporter as the influx transporter. Uh, we do have to uh, change a few of the settings. So here, the transporter location needs to be apical instead of basolateral. And uh, this will also change the type to an efflux. And then for the in vitro clearance diff, we're going to put a zero for that parameter there because we're only looking at active secretion through the apical membrane. Now let's again show the advanced options and make sure that this is uh, uh, for rat and then the transporter is MRP2. And that's selected because we had previously selected it in the transporter table. Now this information looks correct, so we'll transport the transfer the KM and Vmax values back into the um, uh, liver. Uh, here we get a warning that we need to add the MRP2 transporter to the liver tissue. And so we'll go ahead and click yes and then close this. And here we see the same values for Vmax and KM uh, for both transporters. So we'll go ahead and save that table and that'll bring us back into Gastro Plus. Now we're ready to perform a simulation, so we'll go into the simulation tab and just perform a two-hour simulation. Uh, we click uh, start to start the simulation, and uh, as you know, it goes very quickly. And then we'll click on the graph tab and see the graph uh, here, and we'll put that on a semi-log scale so that the uh, y-axis is in the log scale. What you see here is that uh, we don't quite match the points uh, the usual approach to dealing with this type of mismatch between the simulation and the observed data includes modification of the transporter's V max value. However, here we'll try a little bit different approach. Let's assume that the drug has passive, uh, low passive permeability into the liver, and it will have low passive permeability in all tissue. If we change all tissues to the permeability limited tissue models and use the specific P STC uh, to calculate the PSTC value for all the tissues. So we'll simply click on the, uh, go back into the pharmacokinetics, uh, click on uh, edit PBPK, uh, save that record, uh, 
as you're prompted here. Then you can click right click on any of the tissues and then set all tissues uh, to permeability limited. Uh, this will change the graphic on all the uh, tissues and then uh, what we want to do is select use specific PSTC uh, in the bottom left hand corner of the dialog box. Now we'll save this um, PBPK uh, model. Next we'll close this window and we'll go back into the simulation and start another two hour simulation. Now if we look at the graph, we have a much better match of the observed values um, or the line to the observed values. This shows an excellent match between the predicted and the experimental CP time profile. The simulation result was for a pure prediction. It was generated without the need for any empirical scaling factors. Okay, so now we've done a rat simulation. Let's move on and perform a human simulation. So now we'll go back into the compound tab and we'll switch to the next record, which is an IV 20 mg uh, human dose. Again, we switch into the pharmacokinetics tab. Here we're going to create a PBPK model for a human male 30 year old. Uh, so we simply click again on the OK button and this will save that physiology in the same folder as the database file. Now we switch back to the compounds um, or the compound tab, click on the transporter uh, table and then again we need to specify these two um, uh, transporters. So first I'm going to specify OATP with this pull down menu. Again, it's an um, influx transporter, and we're going to specify it as a PVPK tissue again. And then similarly for the um, second one, we're going to specify uh, MRP2. Uh, this one is an efflux transporter, and its location again is PPPK. Now we'll highlight the whole uh, OATP row click on the unit trans um, converter. Again, hepatocytes, in vivo value is uh, unbound. Uh, here we're going to enter a Vmax value of 304 and an in vitro KM value of 44.4 and then an in vitro clearance diff of 0.724. Uh, we can again show the advanced options for OATP and this is a human. Now there's one other um, parameter we have to change here. It's the milligrams of protein uh, per million cells and, and for this experiment it was 0 0.6. Again we'll transform these values back into the table by clicking on this button. Again, it's going to warn us about uh, the, or the fact that we need to change to permeability limited. Uh, we'll click OK and then close this. So now we've got values in here for CAM and VMAX for the uh, OATP transporter. Now we'll highlight the MRP2. Click on the unit trans. Um, uh, this is essentially the same as the OATP, except we want to specify apical and efflux transporter here. And then here we're going to specify uh, zero again for the in vitro clearance diff. Uh, here uh, we can show the advanced options again. It's now it's MRP2 liver human and uh, we need to modify this value to 0 0.6 again. Uh, so now we'll transfer the, those values back into the uh, table. Again, it, it, it says that uh, you know we have to specify or add these uh, to the tissue. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, close and then show these two values here. We can save them. Now if we go to the pharmacokinetics tab very briefly, click on edit PBPK and then look into the liver, you'll see that these transporters are now defined in here. Going back into the PBPK table, we need to uh, set all these to permeability limited uh, and then turn on the use spec um, PSTC, uh, save that and then close it. Now we can go into the uh, simulation tab, 
this time we'll do a 24 hour simulation and we'll simply start it off uh, running the IV dose here. I've already imported the uh, experimental values and so again you see a nice fit uh, to the, um, to the uh, in vivo values and again this is a prediction no empirical scaling factors were used or adjusted um, for this. Okay now as a final step we're going to verify the human PK uh, by simulating an oral administration. Uh, so here we want to create a copy of this particular record. So we would go under database, uh, copy drug record, and we're going to uh, give it a, a nice useful name, uh, PO 80 milligram human dose, and then we'll click OK. Uh, we don't want to copy the support files to the record uh, because those are already uh, imported under this name. Uh, so we'll click OK, and it makes a copy of that record. Now we simply go in here and change the uh, dose form to uh, an IR tablet and we'll change the number of milligrams to 80 milligrams and then go back in and run another 24 hour simulation for this particular compound as um, a oral dose. That finishes. Uh, now we can look at the graph. Let's put it not on a semi-log scale. And you see that it fits, again, nicely the uh, IV data, or excuse me, the in, uh, in vivo data for the um, molecule. Okay, so, so that wraps up the demonstration of including transporters in the IV, IVE um, simulation of Valsartan. Thank you for listening to this video, and if you have any questions, you can email me at mlawless at simulations-plus.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.